Hello all you cool cats and kittens and if you haven't been one of the 99.9% .9 of the population who has Netflix uh, you won't know what I'm talking about but now you will if you've watched Tiger King <gasps> everyone was talking about it I kind of refused to watch it for a little bit uh, and then I caved and we binged those seven episodes like that uh, so that's a shout out to Carol Baskin. Um, she always introduces herself on her YouTube channel and says, hello, all you cool cats and kittens. Bit creepy. Uh, she also uh, allegedly, uh, by one of the other people on the show, uh, killed her husband and fed him to the tigers. What do you think? Is Carol Baskin guilty or not? Who knows? Anyway, oh, on the other side of this camera, I've got my husband and my child walking past the window saying hi. All right, tuning in, we have Jo Coombe. Hello, she's put a uh, tiger up on the screen. Boop, there you go, Tiger King. It is ridiculous, but scary that it is real. It is kind of like a show that a four-year-old has come up with and it's just gone brain dump. Here's all the madness that I can think of and I'm putting it into reality. Okay, you are here to see who we are surprising on our wit surprise call this morning. So let's get stuck straight into it. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you are just tuning in, we are going to call. Ooh, what pro is it? Stand by. So we've got to do it on Skype. So just uh, give me a second. Calling them now. Let's hope it works. And it is, wait for it, folks. Who have we got waiting for the video? To, it's Lizzie B! Oh, hey there. <laughs> fancy chatting to you. Yeah, fancy that. <laughs> and oh, who, I look who it is. Who have we got? Oh, hang on a second. Someone wants to say hi as well. Oh, who it is? It's Look, it's Marley. You want to say hi? And Lizzie and Bon. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. Uh, and oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> Such a deep voice for a little human. All right, guys. Come on, let's go. Oh, God. The madness. You might know what that's like, right? Out you get. Everyone out. Absolutely. How are you doing? Um, yeah, good. 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 Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, a few weeks of kind of shock, you know, a few weeks ago and then just sort of settle into life at home and having run around lots and yeah. trying to enjoy it as best we can. Um, yeah, like I think you've got to, kind of got to, don't you? It's, a time that we never really probably have again in our lives to have mm. such family time. So, um, yeah, for, for us that are out of work, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, got, to, got to make the most of it, don't we? I think so. Uh, and that, yeah, that's the opportunity we're so, sort of looking at that Brady gets to hang out with Frankie a lot more and yeah, uh, we're not traveling as much and, and that's obvious with you guys as well. Um, particularly Glenn who travels probably to more races than what I do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, um, you know, we sort of found our groove as much as you do with two little ones um, with him being away so much. And then, um, yeah, like obviously this, I think Australia was a bit late to the party, but like it sort of felt like it took us all by like, whoa, okay, that's happened quickly. Mm -hmm. No races um, or no events for the foreseeable future and um, not even sort of other types of work that he would normally travel for either. So, um, yeah, having him around and then, you know, the little bits of work that I was doing. Um, also, yeah, upgraded with this too. But uh, yeah, as I said, like we pretty lucky. We live in such an awesome spot. Like in mm. Australia, uh, restrictions are nowhere near as bad as the world. So yeah, like it's focusing on you know, there's so much to be grateful for. There's plenty to be grateful for. So. Yeah, and your 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 location, you're like pretty much have got your own path to your own almost secluded beach, right? Yeah, kind of. Um, I wouldn't say our own secluded beach, but it is a quiet beach. It's a small little community that we live in, and um, 
it borders on the nature reserve. So, um, yeah, like there's not many people that um, use this frequently, this beach. But having said that, I think um, it seems like the whole community is out of work and <laughs> the beach is busier than ever. But when I say yeah. busier than ever, it's still, you know, only a handful of people down there at any given time. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, really lucky to have that. And the weather at this time of year up here is beautiful. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just trying to get to the beach at most days. Well, Brian Cooper, we are getting to the beach most days. And, yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. So, like, f- forget COVID nineteen. What 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 is Lizzie B up to, or what have you been up to since um, retiring from racing? Uh, the, what the last race was Noosa twenty eighteen now, um, and then then you had your your second kid, the gorgeous, handsome little Bon in your arms at the moment. Um, but, but what, what does, what does the future look like for you? Do you know, I know you were studying and I think that's over now. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be honest, since retiring, I haven't done a lot. I mean, having a baby is a lot, but I just wanted to not rush into the next project or whatever it was. Um, so I felt pregnant pretty soon after, um, retiring and then I I coach a little, um, done a a little bit of commentary here and there mm. and just I do a bit of work behind the scenes for Corrupt Vision for Glenn's company. Um, but, yeah, really not much. It's it's all him. But, um, yeah, so just little bits of work here and there and just being here for the for Marley and then obviously now for Marley and Bon um, because, I, you know, as long as each each day can be long and tedious with the kids, but it's also these years are going to fly by and I don't want to, you know, I don't have anything pressing that I'm desperate to go and do and achieve. So, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, like, this is what I choose. And to spend the time with them is special. And I feel like you're pretty lucky to be able to, actually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been mostly about them, um, which is fun. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I did – I finished a teaching diploma, actually, the year that I had Marley, um, my first little daughter, who's now about to turn three. So I finished that but actually haven't worked because I went back to racing. Um, but I've actually just been um, going about the process of getting my teacher registration sorted because uh, it may be uh, only form of income in this family for a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, I hadn't really thought I'd rush back to teaching within the one's first year, but, um, yeah, obviously the situation has changed and if I can get a bit of teaching work, um, you know, some point starting in the next few months, then, um, yeah, it could be, could be good for us as a family. So, yeah. Hmm. I think you'd be an amazing teacher. Um, but how were you... So say, you know, you're in a class full of kids and they start asking you questions, you know, about, you know, what you've done in the past and, like, essentially you're a celebrity, you know, you're a celebrity sports person who's now walking to a classroom and, and teaching these kids. How much do you reckon you'll tell them about your your previous career as a very successful uh, professional triathlete, superstar. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, it's not about if, but like doing my cracks, you know, this obviously came about and um, I'm high school trained. So high school students are very humbling for the best of people. And I was teaching PE um, and the, the um, mentor teacher, he actually introduced me and he said, you know, Liz has done this, that, the other. And, Kids though year nines, it was mostly boys in this class. They just kind of looked skeptically at me. I was pregnant <laughs> at the time and then, um, you know, had quite a belly on me and they just sort of looked, took in what the other teachers said and they just, you know, didn't seem that impressed, weren't even sure they were believing him. Yeah. So then, um, and then it was like, okay, told me a little bit about what I did and this, that, the other and, um, and then it was time for questions, and they got to ask. <laughs> they literally did not believe the other teacher. Like they were like, "So if you did that, then how did like what's your proof?" Like. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, I was just like, um, you know, kind of you know, I'm a learner teacher didn't really know how to respond, and so then I actually I brought in a video from Kona and um, showed him a few little bits, and you know, just then like high school kids are not just the type of people, I mean, some are, some aren't, but they don't just throw their trust into you. You have to gain it. And mm. funny, this class especially, you made a mess, yeah. <laughs> I'm 
I'm your clean it up and get your but yeah, you have to gain their trust and um and whatnot. So yeah, I guess over the over that term they sort of learn. But you know, also over that term I was gradually getting bigger and bigger with a mm. big belly and was teaching athletics. So trying to show running drills and a high jump one day I remember. So. <laughs> um but yeah, like just funny but to be honest, there was plenty of the, te- the classes that I did teach. Hello. Um, that I didn't share that with. It's not important. Um, in so like I'm I'm doing science and PE, and um, I, I'm not going to bring it up to every class. And um, but yeah, I guess there's sometimes that it is valuable to share that with the class, and other times it's irrelevant. So <laughs> yeah, I also you you're one of the most humble people that I know, and I can't imagine you walking into the classroom and just like. Writing up on the chalkboard, Liz Blatchford, two-time second runner-up at the Ironman World Championships. Like, I, can't, I can't imagine you doing that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, to be honest as well, like, the kids sort of get it. Like, Ironman in Australia, a lot of them think of it as surf Ironman. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you tell them that, no, it's triathlon Ironman, you know, half of them are confused. There's always the odd kid in the class that has a parent or uncle or something like that or that competes in Ironman. So those ones, you know, understand it and know it and respect it. But the majority of them don't really understand what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Joe Coombe has just said, uh, you should race them, Lizzie. And I complete when, when, well, obviously when you're pregnant, it's a bit harder. But I remember when uh, I was at school and I always wanted to compete against the PE teacher. I wanted to find ways to beat them. And if I were you, I'd be like just playing you know, a bit coy, and then smash them, teach them a lesson. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, what, one of my um, classes after I had Marley, so I had to do a prep after I'd had her, so I was no longer pregnant, and I was really struggling with this class to get them motivated and get them doing anything. We are doing swimming, and, and one week I said to them, like, they all come up with all the excuses of, you know, this, that, the other, I forgot my togs, this, that, just every excuse under the sun you can imagine. I yeah. remember one time having four out of 20-something kids who actually turned up with their togs and were willing to swim. So I just I said to him that next week I'll come with mine and um, if, if I can come, bring mine and swim with, and swim with them, um, I'd like some more of them to participate. And it worked to, a, to an extent. A few more did jump in and, and they didn't really have a clue what I did. So um, <laughs> they're getting their, their butt kicked in the pool. You know, we're only doing 25 metres and whatnot. But um, yeah. it was a bit like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to help myself. Just, just, just rub it in a little bit. Um, we've got we've got a few, few people who have tuned in who I know are mums. Um, Emma Quinn, Ali Ma has tuned in. Uh, I can see Ruth Brennan Morrie has tuned in as well. Um, how, how have you gone uh, transitioning from one kid to to two kids? And how did Marley first sort of cope with with Bon coming into her space? Oh, um. Yeah, look, I wouldn't say it was an easy transition at all. Um, bon, he's chilled out now. He's nearly six months. But his first three months, he was quite a screamer. Um, didn't want to be put down, um, which just, you know, what it's like. It makes life difficult. And then I've got a two-year-old who is used to having your full attention. Um, so, you know, she acted out a little bit, I think, probably to the normal extent that um, any two-year-old would. Nothing dire, but I sort of... Yeah. I have to be pretty careful about leaving the room if one was in the room and she was in it. Um, yeah. Yeah, a few small instances of her little lashing out for the jealousy. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, she and she's a lot better now. He's nearly six months and she's accepting and like yeah, always wants him to be included and in everything, which is pretty cute. Um, yeah. What what else was the question? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh um, yeah. Look, Glenn has travelled a lot in this first six months as well, so. Mm had a pretty steep learning curve of how to deal with the two of them. Um, and in that first few months, it was tricky. Like, one had no routine, would scream probably from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m. And, you know, that's when oh. that's his bedtime. So, yeah, when I'm away, I'm like, I've got a screaming baby in my arms, not much could settle him except for feeding him. So, you know, have him on the, on the breast and trying to read her bedtime stories and get her into bed and get her to stay in bed. And, anyway. It's, it's all um, it's become much easier already. He goes to bed before her now, so um, then we have a nice hour with Marley after he goes down. And yeah, okay. we're talking about you. Oh, you want your lollipop? Oh, 
<laughs> uh, oh, so yeah, mothering Hi, or parenting 101 is all about Hi Marley. Bribery. Yeah. Bribery. Very useful in these last few months. And um, <laughs> I have promised her all morning if she's been a good girl, she'll get a lollipop. So I might just go and retrieve yeah. the lollipop. <laughs> you go do the lollipop. And I'm going to say to everyone who's listening, um, ask Lizzie a question. We haven't seen Lizzie on our screens for a little bit just because, um, like we said, she's retired from racing uh, and uh, then gave birth to little baby Bond six months ago. So she's been busy. Uh, so if you've got any questions for Lizzie, uh, you should leave a comment right now and we will hit her up with any of those questions. Uh, we'll wait for her to come back. Oh, what flavor is it, Marley? Strawberries and cream. Strawberries and cream? That used to be my favorite, Chubba Chub. Oh, <laughs> yum. Um, yeah. Lizzie, I have to get you to move back into the... Yeah, that's it, because I've got a split screen. Um, uh, oh, Jordan has just said, have you gone back into teaching or has that not started yet? Uh, we, we discussed that at the start of our chat, Jordan. Uh, not back into teaching just yet, but down the track. Um, what's, what's one of the things that you miss about racing? Um being selfish <laughs> <laughs> um great answer let's be honest um being a professional athlete is a pretty selfish pursuit and you know you have to be you have to put yourself first your health your sleep your you know eating well and um everything that goes with performing well so um you know even when i went back to racing after having marley I was less selfish than you know before her but um still pretty selfish and and, you know, you can call it. You can be like, I need to have a sleep at this time. I need to, you know, whatever. Like, and, um, but at this point when, you know, my soul, my main responsibility is these two, um, mm. there's not much uh, room to be selfish. <laughs> uh, no. You'll find a little bit of time to be selfish, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a good response. That's a very honest response. I love it. Um Jo Coombe has just said that she met your dad in Kona once. He was very proud. Uh, but the question was, how do you feel about being so far away from your your parents at this particular point in time? Um, she has just said, assuming they're still in the UK, but I can tell you guys that they are based in Perth. But how do you feel? Like, that's still a long way away. How do you feel about being so far away from uh, parents and sisters right now? Yeah, um, my, all my family, they're in, in Perth, in Western Australia. So um, those of you that are listening from overseas, that's like a five-hour flight away and mm. um, state, the state borders are closed anyway and whatnot. So there's no seeing them for the foreseeable future. And, I mean, thank goodness for video calls and that sort of thing. I'm um, doing plenty of that. Uh, but, yeah, look. I don't know. It's it's tough, and it's probably the toughest thing is thinking about how long, mm. and also about the kids. Like my mum, especially, like she needs her grandchildren fix, and you know we make sure that happens by video calls. But you know it's not the same, and um, I don't know other things like trips work that we did have planned have been cancelled. My parents' seventieth wedding anniversary is in just over a month, and we we're all meant to be going up to. Um, Port Douglas, up, just up north of Cairns for a big family trip. So that's canned. But you know what? Like in the big scheme of things, it's, um, you know, we hope that this will all pass soon. Um, mm. You know, the main thing is that they remain healthy and they, they're being really careful. They're in their 70s and in the first few weeks, I think like a lot of people with this virus, not that they didn't take it seriously, but I think they sort of just thought that they weren't the risk category yeah um, and sort of going about life as usual but you know just doing social distancing and then you know as more's come into into light they've, they've been a bit more careful but you know just sort of funny meme that was like you know in roles reversed i'm now screaming at my parents to stay home yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, true so there was a few firm words from me and my sisters and and likewise glenn with his own parents so um you know, it just comes from a place of caring. But, yeah, so, yeah, look, it's tough being apart from them. We're apart from them most of the time. But mm. um, 
it's just the not knowing of how long until we can actually see them that's yeah yeah, mm. yeah it makes it a bit hard um Alison Deenan has just said what was fun one of your and you tell us when you've got to go um one of your favorite race memories and why oh um favorite race memories oh look Crane has got a lot of strong memories mm. um sorry you're right just and just look to be honest Kona was in the last few years of my career like I raced for a long time 18 years um total and most of it was ITU and Ironman in the last five years so and Kona was always the focus blah 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 so um I, probably my first ever a leaky finish line like Mm -hmm. Just that running down a leaky. I know that's pretty boring, but I haven't had time to think about this answer. Um, so yeah, probably that one. Just that first leaky, um, having a good race there, um, and probably something that I didn't realise at the time was how tricky it is to nail a racing corner. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, for those who don't know, uh, Lizzie's debut. Uh, race in Kona she finished third and at the time that was the fastest debut time ever uh in Kona it's one of my favorite stats about you <laughs> I love it it's been well surpassed now by some pretty amazing women but uh, yeah all right we'll, yeah. we'll claim that we'll claim that for 2013 it was Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, Jason Bernstein has just said, ah. "Hey, Lizzie from the Bernstein family in Altoona, Altoona, uh -huh. Iowa. Please, yeah. we are safe and healthy." Oh, good. Um, yeah, that the Bernstein family meant a lot to us. We we stayed with them. We stayed in their basement for quite a long time. They live ah. just outside Des Moines in Iowa. Yep. So when I was racing short course, um, the first year they were homestay of me and Annabelle actually we had some real fun at their place um and then um I think either one or two years after that Glenn and I went back and stayed in the Bernstein's basement um for some extended periods and rode the roads of the flat cornfields of Iowa and yeah trained out of their their basement basically and they they were just such a beautiful family they're you know well into triathlon and Ironman themselves and um yeah it's been really fun and you know that's actually if I say what I honestly miss about triathlon the most it is the people when the people mm. i've met along the way and whether like oh you know whether and when i'll ever see a lot of them again so yeah yeah you almost have to do uh, another like round the world sort of vi victory lap um you know you know like how they do it at the footy <laughs> where they yeah. but like it's a it's a world tour of just saying hello and goodbye to everyone <laughs> you've yeah, ever met uh, i know I, th I feel like i never feel like it's that I'm not going to see these people ever again, but I suppose, it's, you know, it creeps in your head that yeah, you might not see them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And even like the time that I raced for GB, um, mm. a lot of really good British friends and um, I know I'll see them again at some point, but it's not like the next stage of racing. <laughs> uh, they won't just stand, hey? Bon. Okay. Let's all join in and sing him a lullaby. Do you know what I realised the other day? That Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Bar Bar Black Sheep are the exact same tune. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So you... I reckon there's some others like that. What was, um... anyway, this is probably not that exciting for anyone else, but it's very London exciting. Bridge is Falling Down and uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it is too. Yeah. And then the other wow. one. The this, other... Is, this is the technical things I'm, like, learning these days. <laughs> The other one I know is Hot Cross Buns and Three Blind Mice are the same oh, tune yes. too. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to put him down on the map. Yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> Jordan Blanco has actually said, and we, we chatted about this a little bit at the start, um, how are you doing with Glenn's job? Presum presumably it's on hold. But the next part of the question, which I really like, is ah, how... Ah, ah. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. sat on bond. Oh, no. <laughs> Marley, don't sit on your brother, you goose. Cheeky little monkey. You cheeky monkey you are. Um, Jordan has said, how can we help? Do, have you guys, is there anything that people can do to help? I don't know. Is Glenn 
selling photos or yeah for sure actually like his website um it's not always been a you know huge source of income but all the images on his website um he can sell um digitally you can email him and sell them so yeah like he's got some pretty awesome shots from all the years of going to races so yeah of course that would be welcomed and if people want some beautiful race pictures for their training rooms or whatever um but oh, look i don't know i'm not super creative with this stuff he's he's trying to think of the ways um to make himself relevant you know like yeah. as, as you are steph and mm. um yeah today i know he's gone to um do some filming with tim reed and yeah they're trying to think outside the box of the usual um so you know create content or whatever but yeah um i don't know how people could help honestly sorry <laughs> i don't know the straight answer to that but yeah, if people want images, please go check out his Corrupt Vision website um, and, yeah, we can sort that. <laughs> yeah. Is it – what's the actual website? Is it just corruptvision.com or do you, <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. That's all right. What we'll do is I'll add it into the um, um, the description of this so we can check it out Okay. later. Awesome. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Jordan. That was sweet of you to ask. Um, and, but also on top of that, um, I, th- I think one of the key things to do is the, the content that he creates and then what we create as well is to share it. So just to get it out there um, as much as possible because that, that helps in, in other ways as well and potential um, ways of earning money. The more you share, the more eyeballs on things, the more that you know we can potentially earn money through other avenues. Yeah, of course. And I mean realistically at this time people should be wanting content more than ever so um, yes but yeah it's just whether there's a value to that and you know as you know your whole thing Steph what you're trying to work out you know what people want to pay for and what they don't so Mm. yeah (laughs) it's a yeah it's a tricky one uh and just quickly the website is corrupt.vision.com no is that yeah I think that's what Uh, but anyway, it's easy to find. Just look up Corrupt Vision website. You'll find it. We'll put it in the link of uh, the link in the description of this chat. Um, I'm very aware that you are trying to juggle two small humans. Um, yeah. They, there's only so many lollipops uh, that you can give a th- three-year-old. Now destroyed the lollipop and it's been hurting her tongue. Oh no! Don't, oh no! You don't chew it. You just suck on it. No, she doesn't got that concept yet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, all right. I will well, thanks love for having you us. and leave you. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully we can catch up again soon. We'll get the kids to have a bit of a chat with each other, I think. Sounds good. That'll be enthralling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, does Marley, I mean, Marley's a little bit older than Frankie, but Frankie thinks that every screen is a touch screen. So she goes up to the TV and like smashes it. Um, and then the other thing she struggles with, because we're doing so much FaceTime or, or whatever, she thinks that any video she sees is live. So she's trying to talk to... Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Is Marley <laughs> the same? She's trying to talk to the Wiggles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, to a point. Yeah, yeah. I- Give her um, Cosmic Kids yoga and on my laptop, and the laptop's not touch screen, and she's always trying to press on to the next one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frankie's also got to a point where I'll be working like with it on my lap, and she'll just come up and shut it on me. Like, <laughs> done. You're done. Time to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, yes, I definitely get that. If you're, <laughs> you know, on anything too long. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude. All right. Well, thank you for joining us um, on our Wit Surprise call. Uh, and <laughs> I I guess we'll be chatting to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Seth. Much love. See ya. Yeah, bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.